What I'd like to talk about is uh, the uh, reflections that I've uh, been engaged in over the past three decades on what is this whole thing about creativity all about. So the, my comments are called the art and science of the near possible because it seems to me that that's really what creativity is about. I'll start um, uh, with William James, Henry's uh, brother, who said uh, in the late uh, 19th century uh, at, the, uh, uh, at, at Yale actually, that the, instead of thoughts of concrete things patiently following one another in a beaten track of habitual suggestion, and by doing so, by the way, he linked himself solidly to Aristotle, who was the fellow who followed things in a beaten track of habitual suggestion. Uh, we have the most abrupt cross cuts and transitions from one idea to another, rarefied abstractions and discriminations, unheard of combinations of elements, the subtlest associations of analogy. In a word, we seem suddenly introduced into a seething cauldron of ideas where everything is fizzling and bobbling, those are technical terms, <laughs> about in, in a state of bewildering activity where partnerships can be joined or loosened in an instant, treadmill routine is unknown, and the unexpected seems the only law. That's 100 years ago. Um, and this was really the beginning uh, of the notion of creativity as being something other than Aristotelian logic. Uh, and I think it's one of the true turning points uh, in history. So we're gonna talk about that uh, a little bit. We're gonna talk about creativity in this art of the near possible. And Michelangelo's great uh, drawing here. And I, oh, I was gonna comment on that, uh, those instructions for the computer there, but I won't do that. <laughs> uh, so the word creativity uh, turns out to be a very recent word. Uh, creativity, as a word, made it into Webster's in 1875. Creative uh, was a 17th century word, and create goes back as far as we, uh, we know. But creativity is something you and I can do. Uh, when the world was created, we didn't create it. A god created it. And for many thousands of years, it was only the gods that could create. The notion that you and I can do something creative goes back a little bit more than, than 100, uh, 100 years. Um, and my definition of it, which has evolved from others' uh, definitions, is, is the art of creativity is the art of associating two previously unassociated fields. So it's very good to understand engineering, but you also have to understand history, and you have to be able to make the links between engineering and history. I'll tell you a little NACFI story, as a matter of fact. One of the first uh, NACFI uh, conferences uh, was called From Cells to Cell Phones. So it was taking cellular biologists and putting them together with electrical engineers. So the first thing uh, they have to do is get familiar with what each other does, right? So put a cellular biologist and, uh, and an electrical engineer and listen to what they say. You'll hear nothing because they have nothing to say to each other, right? They're both talking about cells, but neither of them have words that can communicate accurately to the other. So they have to begin to experiment, and they experiment for three or four months figuring out what does he mean when he says cell, right? Uh, and then it goes on from there. By the way, they're both systems engineers because cells are systems, uh, and obviously electrical engineers are systems, but they have no common vocabulary, even though way up here at some level of abstraction, they have very common concepts. So that's what associating previously unassociated fields. It's work to do this. It's work that by and large our universities don't really get behind. David and I were talking about that a little bit, but we can talk about that later. Arthur Kessler used another word for it, the famous uh, uh, author, he called it bisociation. And bisociation is something that we've been doing for a very long time. This is the lion man of Holenstein Stadel. Uh, is from the Ordination period, 40,000 years ago. And you'll note that there's a head uh, of, of a lion on the body of a man. Why would you ever do that? First of all, it's a better idea than putting the head of a man on the body of a lion, uh, because that got you no place. Uh, but that's because they were afraid of lions and they wanted to be able to think like lions. And so this is a symbolic representation of creativity going back 40,000 years. And I can give you some that go back uh, further than that. Bertrand Russell, uh, 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 talked uh, about it when he talked about his condition. The greatest challenge to any thinker is stating a problem in a way that will allow its solution. It's not just stating a problem. It's stating a problem in a way that will allow its solution. It is the art of the near possible. Uh, everybody know this guy? Everybody can pronounce his name? Uh, any Hungarians in the room? Uh, it's Mike uh, Csikszent Mihaly, who's, uh, who wrote Flow and wrote uh, Creativity, a wonderful guy. And he says, it all begins with, with a, a sense uh, of curiosity. Perhaps something's not right. Someplace there's a conflict, a tension, a need to be satisfied. And that's where the whole creative process starts, in that sense, of that, that tension. 
Um, I, I think uh, it begins with curiosity, uh, and curiosity is a very old idea. This is a, a drawing from the 15th century called the Cabinet of Curiosities. And, and if you look here, you'll see all kinds of very curious things. We know what they are now, but in the 15th century, these were very curious things. And they wanted to put all the curious things in a room, so if you wanted to have a curious idea, you could just go to this room. We, we should have cabinets of curiosity these days. But this, this speaks to one of the key uh, elements of creative uh, people. Uh, creative people tend to have ubiquitous interest. Uh, they have uh, abstraction ability by exploring beyond the boundaries. Uh, they, uh, they look at their assumptions. They look at their implications. They look at flaws of their ideas. They tend to be very open. They love ambiguity. And they have a certain immaturity. These are not <laughs> operators, right? These are definitely not uh, operators. And operators uh, make everything today just like it was yesterday and tomorrow it will be the same. That's not these people. These, these are an entirely different personality set. So curiosity leads to collection and curation. Uh, collection and curation are not often associated with creativity, but if you walk around uh, with, a, with an iPad and uh, make notes of everything that you see during the day, and don't try to organize them, wait till that night, wait till a week later, and then organize them, you will see amazing patterns start to develop. And organize those patterns, uh, and, and that's the curation, and you will uh, automatically in, improve your creativity. And out of, out of that, uh, this is a cycle, of course, and out of that, uh, comes uh, creation and then this feed process feeds back on itself. So it's a very intricate process, but it's definitely something you can do uh, all day long. Anybody know Alice Acock in this group of artists? Uh, I just, I think she's uh, amazing. Alice, it turns out, has a deep interest in mathematics. Uh, we're going to have a separate talk tonight uh, uh, later what these mathematics mean, but I won't go into that right now. But she, these are complex mathematics about, the, uh, about systems. And this is what Alice uh, produces as a result of her interest uh, in mathematics. These are, uh, these are abstract mathematical equations, and those of you who are physicists will recognize some of these. This is another one that I particularly like. If it looks like these are on Park Avenue, that's because they were put on Park Avenue uh, two years ago. And, and there's, an, uh, there's, uh, there's another one. Uh, Nabokov, who uh, the famous author that you all know from uh, Lilia, was one of the world's leading lepidopterists, uh, as a matter of fact. Uh, that's this little blue uh, butterfly that, that he found. He said, genius is finding the invisible link between uh, things, and back to the basic idea of associating previously unassociated ideas. Uh, how many of you know uh, Jean Plenza? Uh, great. Uh, that's true. It's a different group that knew uh, Alice. Um, uh, Jean is uh, fascinated by making uh, the, uh, the invisible visible. Here is uh, an invisible visible. Can you see it? It's, I think it's just stunning. Uh, and I could show you more of these things. Who would have thought of that? Jean uh, thought of that. Clues that you're uh, near uh, a creative experience is that uh, your life is filled with ambiguities, that you see things that other people think are illusions that paradoxes uh, are actually your friends instead of your enemies, that dilemmas uh, occur all the time. You love riddles uh, and puzzles. Conundrums are, are your friends. Uh, enigmas uh, uh, look great, and fallacies are just wonderful things to look at, <laughs> because all these things uh, are a sign that the near possible is, is close by. The near possible is very different from uh, uh, normal engineering. In the near possible, you want delayed commitment uh, to hypothesis formation. You don't want to do it fast. That's the operating mentality. That's fine, but you, in creativity, you want to uh, let it soak. Uh, you want to suspend disbelief for hours or days as opposed to, please get to the point, as uh, the normal county prosecutor uh, would say. It's just the opposite uh, of that. And you have to listen uh, for distant signals, uh, as this, uh, this gentleman was doing in the First World War. He was very effective at hearing airplanes coming from a great uh, distance away. So let me ask you to exercise your creative powers. I want you to put a bridge uh, over this, uh, this, uh, uh, this river here. You've got the image of your bridge? Look like that. Do any of you know who designed this bridge? You, this audience probably does. Uh, Calatrava. Uh, from, uh, from Spain, and, and there he is. Calatrava uh, is an architect, but he has enormous interest in skeletons, among other things. He also likes other stuff. He likes bugs, uh, he likes uh, 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 mathematical equations, and, and he loves uh, fly's eyes, things of this sort. He's just fascinated by all these things, and he uses those as inspirations for his buildings. Here's his buildings. 
Do those look like bugs and flies' eyes? This is, this is a bug. This is a friendly bug. This could be a pet bug. This is a warrior bug. <laughs> uh, and there's a mathematical equation. Uh, so inspiration comes from, he's associating previously unassociated uh, fields. And it's the, it's the uh, uh, creative people are instinctive framework builders. They tend to be psychologically androgynous. Uh, everybody giggles when you say that, but it's true. Uh, extroverted uh, and introverted, aggressive and nurturing, sensitive and rigid, dominant and submissive, conservative and re risk seeking, humble uh, and proud. And I think, that, oh, and they have a sense, as uh, Chick Semihali calls it, <laughs> of sunny pessimism, uh, which, uh, which is great. They also have an ability to zoom out and to see patterns that other people can't uh, see, uh, as uh, this space photograph. Uh, uh, indicates. So it's not only diving in, it's zooming out that's important. As McLuhan summarized it, I don't know who discovered water, but it wasn't a fish. Uh, <laughs> and it's very hard for us to see our own context. And so we need to uh, get practiced uh, at that. John Seeley Brown then goes further and he talks about bricolage, which many of you uh, know about, which is a concept that uh, Claude Levy Strauss first talked about, which is the assembly of many different uh, ideas, found art in some ways. So if all these little A's are associations that you've made, it's the, the creative process isn't one association, it's many. So you link these associations, and you have to find, for every new one, you have to figure out where in that symbolic system the association fits. And by the way, you need to understand about the links between these, these things. And finally, you can begin to see the overall pattern of what's going on here. And this may be the pattern seen by an analytic genius, but the same uh, thing could be perceived differently uh, by uh, an intuitive uh, genius. And by the way, these things change in time. So what you saw five minutes ago is not what you see now. So there's a dynamic uh, aspect uh, to uh, all of this. So it's the construction of associative networks that really uh, has to do with the, uh, the creative process, which all of you who are artists uh, know a lot about. Uh, so uh, to give you an example, what, what happens if you combine the World Wide Web, the notion of graph theory, and, and the digital library? Well, if you happen to be Larry Page and Sergey Brin and Terry Winograd, the result of those three associations is something called Google, uh, which did uh, rather well. And that's where uh, it, it came from. So obviously there's a social aspect to this. This is the picture of the first hackathon um, uh, ever in, in history. It took a while to bring these people together. Um, but, uh, and uh, we could go on for a long time about the social aspects of that, uh, but, but I won't given the, the uh, shortness of time. As Daniel Pink summarized it, people who hope to thrive in the conceptual age must understand the connections between diverse and seemingly separate disciplines. They must know how to link apparently unconnected elements to create something new. And that is the essence uh, of it all. Five guidelines, all McKinsey guys ends up, end up talks with the so what's. Focus on the near possible. Curiosity, collection, curation, and creation uh, all go together. Fly high, soar widely, dive, uh, dive deeply. Master bricolage, and pick your colleagues to complement uh, your knowledge. Uh, and don't rush, relax. It will all happen. Thank you very much. Okay.